Good day, it's some people all over the world. Today, once again, we are coming with another program designed to promote Asian language, Asian culture, and Asian tradition among Asian people, both at home and in the diaspora. Today, we have one of our illustrious sons who has, who has a deep knowledge of Asian culture, tradition, and custom, and is an, is an Asian language expert. He's a man that has traveled far and wide, who understands the difference between Asian culture and the culture of the white man and all that. He's a man with a lot of wealth of experiences. We'll be, we are with him today. I'll be having a kind of chat with him, an interview with him, where you will benefit very much from him. Even if you are an Asian person, you have so many things to benefit from him. Besides this, he has been a champion of so many Asian cause. And as we move on, you will to understand what I'm talking about. So he is right here between me, beside me now, sitting right beside me as we start. So once we start now, you get a picture of what we are talking about. About. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. We are feeling very happy for granting us this uh, rare privilege to have a chat with you, sir. This is Sonia Himari Negbenuse of Ego Studio, London, UK. Sir, let us start with your self-introduction. Sir, you doing us, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Negbenuse. My name is Elder Coach Edmund Bora. I'm a native of Esaland from Ubiaza. I am an elder of Ubiaza land and also from Idumiji of Ubiaza kingdom. Thank you. Yeah, you said coach. Can, we, you, can I get a picture of what you coach about, sir? Uh, actually... I used to be a coach in the sport of judo. And through that coaching career, I took it very far. I represented Nigeria at world and Africa level. I produced so many, many Africa champions, national champions. And uh, because of the sport, I've traveled to so many countries all over the world. So that is the coaching aspect. Truly, truly, I worked and retired as a coach. I retired as a chief coach in a Edo State Sports Council. Oh, what a beautiful experience, sir. You just said that you've traveled around so many countries of the world. Sir, we, we want to come in from there now. Now, let us talk about the culture, the custom of the areas you've traveled to. Do they practice their culture and custom or they dump it and just live on like that, sir? Uh, actually, when you talk of culture and tradition, for example, in Japan, Japanese people, they hold tenaciously to their culture. They don't joke with it. In fact, everything in Japan is done in Japanese language. They, from their kindergarten to tertiary institution, everything is done in Japanese language, in Japanese writing. Even the sport of judo is being taught in Japanese language. Maybe for clearer understanding, you may just uh, translate for the students to understand. If not, uh, Japanese people hold to their culture. If you go to France, Play, once you land at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, you don't even ride from their aircraft. All the air hosts and air hostesses in the aircraft, all of them speak French. Immediately you come down at Charles de Gaulle Airport, you don't hear anybody speaking English again. They speak their language and they live according to their culture. And this is where I'm saying that Asian culture is not inferior to any other culture in the world. Asian culture is something we need to preserve and hold tenaciously to it. Our culture, our tradition, our way of life. 
where some people, they are so blessed that most of this, our culture, we almost align them to slip off our hand. And uh, that is why you find that a lot of people don't play with their culture and their tradition. And as an Asian man, you must remember that that culture is what binds us together as Asian people. We are very, very unique and special people with special privileges, tradition, and culture that God has handed through our ancestors unto us. So I will encourage every Asian person Keep to your culture and your tradition. It's not inferior to any other culture in the world. Thank you. My pleasure, sir. Now, you now discover that English language seems to be dominating every other language almost everywhere in the world now. Now, do you think in the presence of this English language dominating everywhere, there's a need for us to preserve our language as a people? Oh, yes, very well. Uh, you just mentioned English language is dominating other languages across the world. That is what the Englishmen have done. They preserve their language, they develop it, both in spoken and written form. And uh, that is why Asian people, in fact, is this our generation that are able to speak Asian. You will be surprised across the breadth and length of Asian land, in all the schools, our youth, our children in the primary, secondary, tertiary institutions, they cannot speak Asian, they cannot read Asian, they cannot understand even, as, even at home. The children, their parents speak to them in Nissan language, they will respond in broken English. They respond with pidgin. Even at home, children are more comfortable speaking English, broken English to their parents at home. So this is why our language, we must preserve it. We must preserve a sound language because a sound language is our identity as a sound people. We must not allow it go extinct with this generation. Because when you lose your language, you lose your identity. That is why in our organization, Initiative for Language Development, Literacy, and Culture, we say a language lost is identity lost. So I'm using this medium to call on Asian people the world over. Let us come together and develop our language. It's very, very important. Yo, thank you very much, sir. Now, um, we are talking of retaining our language. Now, what do you think we should do to bring back ESA language to our various schools, primary, secondary, and even higher institutions, sir? Thank you very much. This is the work that... I, I myself and some others, we took upon ourselves to make sure that one of the steps to preserve a sound language is to bring it to school. And in that regard, we have worked very, very hard and we have achieved some milestone we have updated and secured the approval of Asian language orthography. Asian language orthography has been approved by the National Education Research and Development Council, Abuja. We are working hand in hand with them to make sure that Asian language is properly developed. And by the time we develop this orthography. The next step where we are at the moment is the drafting of a sound language curriculum. And uh, I want to use this medium to appeal to all the sound people all over the world. Initiative for Language Development, Literacy and Culture is a registered organization. It has trustees, it has a board 
I am the chief executive of that organization. We are properly structured and uh, we have been working hard to make sure that a sound language is returned to the school curriculum. The stage where we are now, we will, uh, I'm making an appeal, open appeal to all the sound people all over the world to come and support us financially so that the committee to draft this curriculum has already been set up. The finance is just our little bit delay now. Once this curriculum is drafted, the committee is made up of Dr. Henry Wafidon, is a, co a curriculum expert in Ambrose Ali University. Mr. Andrew Odegbe, prolific Esan author, is a part of the committee. Myself, a representative of the Ministry of Education, you know, representative of the Nigeria Union of Teachers, they make up this uh, committee to draft the curriculum. It's just the fund that is holding up. Once the curriculum is drafted, we now come up with the teacher's manual. In, to take it a step further, at the moment, honestly speaking, there are no qualified design teachers. That is why the King's Polytechnic Biaja have already opened a department online for ASAN language studies. And uh, we want to encourage ASAN teachers to come and do a three months course and get a certificate as a qualified ASAN language teacher, just three months. I will encourage all primary schools across ASAN, send two of your staff to King's Poly Ubiaja, three months they will be qualified as a language teacher. And once we return a sound language to schools, not only in our school, anywhere you are in the world, once this curriculum is completed, is drafted and approved and included in the education curriculum of Nigeria and anywhere it is required to be studied, you can study, you can be in England, in America, in Australia, in Japan, in China, and you have it online. You can study a language properly. So I am appealing to a people, support initiative for language development, literacy, and culture, so that we can cross this level of all effort to preserve a language. Thank you. My pleasure, sir. Yeah, we have uh, about 35 or that about kings in Isan land. And uh, I want you to talk to those kings in Isan uh, on what they are supposed to do to encourage the propagation of Isan language in their own various kingdoms, sir. Thank you very much. Our energies, as we call them in Isan, our traditional rulers, they are a very, very important component of preservation of not only our language, but our culture and traditions. In this respect, our energies have been doing so much. Some of them preserve uh, the culture and tradition handed down by our ancestors. But at this point in time, we want to organize a sound language Development Summit of Esan Land will be assembled in one place and we will re-emphasize the need for our traditional rulers to take their rightful place in the Esan culture and tradition. They have a very great role to play because they are the custodian of our culture and tradition and they are charged with the primary responsibility to preserve our language. So I will encourage all the energies in this land. Anybody coming to your palace, tell your aides to educate them. Every onoji has a peculiar way of greeting them. We start from there, you come to the onoji of Ubiaza, 
you say Zaiki. You come to Onoji of Uromi, you say Zaiki, Jamata. All these are ways to make sure that anybody visiting our traditional ruler in their palaces, you greet them in the traditional and dialectical form of our Asian language. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, now, again, now you mentioned custom, culture, and all that. And I think our dances are tied to those areas we're talking about now. Now, we have so many dances in the sun in the past, but right now, very many of them have gone, gone ex extinct. So what do you think we can do to bring back those dances back to a sun community and a sun environment, sir? Thank you very much. You see, because what we are doing is 100% ESA. We are not leaving any aspect. We are looking at the educational side to preserve our language. And we are also looking at the cultural and traditional side. Our dances, so many of them actually have gone extinct, but we still have opportunity now to resuscitate those dances. Those dances, some of them, even the Igbebonelimi, Ikhialimi. In fact, some villages don't have it anymore. In some villages now, they go and call youth from other neighboring towns around. This should not be so. We can resuscitate all our dances, not only our dances, our agriculture, our fashion, our craft and arts. In fact, this cloth I'm putting on now is a part of our traditional industry. There is an industry we can encourage to start producing this kind of Asa culture, fashion. So a whole lot of things that have gone extinct, not just our dances alone. Our dances, our agriculture, there are some yams that we used to farm those days. But thank God we are able to preserve some of them. There is our acts and culture. We used to carve, we do artwork, and we have our fashion. All these are industries with their value chain. And uh, during the ASAN Language Development Summit, I believe that all these things will be brought for discussion among ASAN leaders, our industrious and illustrious sons, our traditional rulers, our educationists, professors, what have you. We will invite all of them to ASAN language development and culture to discuss all these things, and I believe very well, most of those things that are gone extinct, we can resuscitate them, revive them, and bring them back to life. I believe so. Oh, so you are, you are so optimistic of what you are saying, and uh, without doubt, I can see that you must have made a lot of, a lot of effort in preserving the sign language, culture, and all that. Sir, I, I don't know if I'm wrong here, you are not wrong at all because uh, when I discover that so many children that are born in Asian land, they, when they are playing among themselves, they don't communicate in Asian. They are communicating in English, in Pidgin among themselves. So when I called one to interview, I discovered they don't even hear Asian, even though they were born in Asian here. That is when I went into investigation to discover that Asian language is facing the danger of extinction. If we are not careful, it's after this, my generation, Asian language will be lost. And once a language is lost, identity is lost, 
that is when I started to walk. And as I walked along, I discovered that Asian people, we don't even need to travel abroad because the industry that are there in our tradition and culture, they are so enormous. And uh, we just neglect them and allow them, even many of them, to go into extinction. So, so far, so good. We have been able to do so much with the support of our Asian sons and daughters who has been supporting us, both home and diaspora. For example, we translated Learn Africa Dictionary into a sign language. It is available on the website www.glosby.com slash language. Once you just go to that website, Glosby, www.glosby.learn Africa Dictionary, it will just pop up. Then in that dictionary, we assemble a team of 40, 12 to 14 translators who help in translating that into a sign language. And thereafter, we have also made sure that we, among ourselves, effort is on now to also translate the Bible into a sign language. And that Esan Bible, we also take some time to work on it, and it will soon come on screen because some languages in Nigeria, they already have their Bible. Esan people that are so gifted, uh, we are working on it. There is uh, a team assembled working on the translation of the Bible into Esan language. And I'm very, very sure by the grace of Almighty God, with the support of all Esan industrious sons and daughters at home and abroad, all these things, posterity will not forget you and I if we are able to bring them back in place. That's what I believe. Ah, that is great and that's enormous. You know, most work you've just mentioned now take a lot of money. I don't know if you are comfortable with the uh, level of <laughs> money in your uh, bank account right now, or do you need to talk to some people to assist in, uh, in achieving this, mainly that the ASAM Bible project, sir? Uh, very well. You see, when you talk of finance, finance is always a, a handicap in a project like this because it is a selfless project. Uh, myself, I know how much of my own funding that I've gone to it. Elder Freddy Jewere, who is the chairman of the board of Asian Language Development, Literacy and Culture, he himself has uh, committed so much resources, including Asian daughters, sons and daughters, home and in diaspora. At this very level now, it is the finances that is our handicap. Funding have greatly slowed down our work. For example, the curriculum committee. We just need five million for the committee to do their work, print this paper, send it to Minister of Education. They now include it to the curriculum of education in Nigeria and the do state. So funding is uh, a big challenge to us. I believe that uh, our people say by cooperation, the rice will rise and fill the pot. So I want to appeal to all Asian sons and daughters at home and in diaspora, wherever you are on the face of the earth, please support this effort, support our work, and uh, maybe later on, we have uh, a bank account in the name of the organization. And uh, later on, I will uh, tell you of the account that uh, if you are willing to support our work, 
I will give you the number of the account and uh, whatever God lay in your heart to support us with, we will document your name in the ASAN curriculum manual that we are going to produce. All contributors, everybody that contribute, we will document your name in that book. And you know that that book, ASAN language, once it comes back to school, it is an everlasting thing. Children yet unborn will come and read that you contributed to this work. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. We are so grateful having you around. And I think uh, there's only there's one thing I really want to ask again, and I want you to talk about it. Now there are some ASAM, maybe couple that stays maybe in the, in the US, in Europe, in America, and all that. They are not here, and the children that are born into such, such union, how do, you, how, how do they do to preserve ASAM language among those couples? When the parents are ASAM, but they are not born here in ASAM. How do they do? What is your advice to them, sir? Uh, what I can just uh, tell them is that in this day of technology, just go on the website, you will find, for example, what we are doing now is going to go worldwide. Go to the website of uh, Upsat, King's Polytechnic. They have put up a website where you can learn more of Asian language, the greetings, the basic Asian language. Try to speak it to your children at home. Like the greeting, in Asian language, there is gender greeting. A woman has a way to greet a man. And uh, like as I have said, those couple who are Asian origin but in abroad, you can do a lot to bring up your children, at least at home. Let them greet you in Asian language. In the morning, the male will greet Aisan Baba, Aisan Ine. General greeting is Hara. General greeting in the afternoon, in the evening. Then the female, in the morning, they will greet Naoji Baba, Naoji Ine. That's morning greeting. Then after eating, our culture is very, very respectful. After eating, the male will greet Baba Hara, Ine Hara. The female will greet Baba Dekeli, Ine Dekeli. When the father goes out, is coming back home, the welcome from the children, Baba Obohian, Ine Obohian. That's when the children, maybe the father goes to where he's coming back home, the children will welcome Daddy, Daddy Obohian, Ine Obohian. Because a son, culture, language, and tradition actually start from home, from home with the parents. So these are basic things. Those ESA indigenous abroad can teach their children in the house. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. So you've been speaking to us in English language, and I wonder if you actually know how to speak ESA language, sir. So on the final note now, I wanted to talk to the ASAN world using ASAN language this time and now. Advise them, talk to them altogether, wherever they are in the whole world, sir. ASAN, oh yeah, oh yeah. ASAN, oh yeah, oh yeah. I am a full blooded ASAN man. Ibu Hamale, any J Samale, any. Okbomo Eneriwa Enevole Bu me tueva rivi Menava Vagma Kubi Onu Rue San Samana Nai Domie Okebe Julua 
abaze woria ayulwa uwa weye o de weye vagma kugbe na miege oni sansamana ebi maluwo kekeke maki kobo gbere tun ola okun aki miege ebo nebe ebo lebo ebo nerwe ebo eki avado emi bun 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 bo to esa no se emi no heke ebo ki na ebo lebo vare do age oli emi bun 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 no sonbla wo rema vag ma hu a wo wo enem na ba jo na bo bo ma yuloa ima ne ne wo are na ma pa ki ze san eni mo ire na ehe san e go eze e ran egben isku re be gbe ne bo to esan ami e jada lo esan bo imi ma ni ane ri bi isku ehe san e ran egben e ran etie oni bo ze mada Agmoregbe ni a mako kobo kugbe. Onu wan ma mugbo na naturally initiative for language development, literacy and culture. E ni ole madalu ilomo no heke sanrive. Ek ma ki se ngwe na se ni a ma ki wo mama lu ngwe na ne bun bun lo abuto. Ne wo mama bun. Okwe ra okwe bolo pia bi kwe sabe bolo bo ne robok pa malen ne rigojman mare amione sona a ramdoni nia me guano imie sanrebe o pia o kwe uwa weye o o de weye me o sambla na ba no regbe o dami evi kia me ba be be ba kira robok mure be be oki do deri. Medale eni je sama e ato e ki khali. E san vagma kubi. Vagma ze san uro no simane san. Aba ze wor ya uloa. Vagye san no boma uloa. Oni mevye e me san rivi. E nebu wa e nebu de. Eni je sama me tuweba o va zaiki. Va hara hara va bulu. So makre kori vikbe. Or ala aneta number no say WhatsApp. Me he waita lagba me ora no neta jo re akona kona rivi. Isa bara neta osa. Or ya no guano no ne me talonia. WhatsApp number no sman. Olehi zero eight zero five eight seven six eight 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 zero. Make it tally. Zero eight zero five eight seven six eight 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 zero. Ozeva yeribo, onozeva noibo. Zero eight one six three two two six five one five. Make it tally. Zero eight one six three two two six five one five. Any number of Vivani were to your level was up where there's a ball in the metal or age work here. I give to Agma. Wabulo boo. Oh, yeah, Babu Babu. And finally, we have come to the concluding part of the interview. And I'm sure you enjoyed every bit of the interview. You've heard the advice, the practical teaching, the challenges be before him and all that. I think that this interview has brought many things all together into one. It has taught us about our culture, our language, how to preserve it and all that. And that he has given us a picture of the project, big one, gigantic project that is only that needs assistance financially from all these people all over the world. And uh, finally, it is an interview that many of us will play and play and play again because uh, you have a lot to benefit from the interview. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for having the time to be with us, watching and viewing. Please, as you watch it, make sure you do the, you, you do the advice or you do what he asks us to do in the course of the interview. It was a great moment being with our father. Eda Bora. 
So thank you once again for being with us. Your host, Sunday Ayimare Inegbenose, Ego Studio, London, UK. Thank you for being with us and goodbye. And goodbye.